Welcome to Quick Bites, a video series brought to you by the Washington Hospitality Association, highlighting changes coming to the Washington State Food Code on March 1st, 2022. Today's video is sponsored by Harbor Food Service. Harbor Food Service is thankful for every opportunity to keep our industry moving forward. For other supportive resources, visit harborfoodservice.com where we believe that life happens around the table. And now from the Washington State Department of Health, Here's Susan Shelton to discuss employee health. All right, so food workers are our greatest strength in food service, but sick food workers may actually also be the biggest risk for food safety. So the key to keeping your business safe is to make sure all workers are trained on the key symptoms and illnesses to watch for, that your managers and persons in charge know what to do if there's a potential foodborne illness, and that workers practice good personal hygiene at all times, even if they feel healthy. So let's really detail the symptoms and the illnesses that you really need to make sure all staff know to report and potentially to stop working. So while the Food Worker Card Training Program provides an introduction to foodborne illnesses, it is required that each food establishment also train workers on proper illness prevention. So this means you can't just rely on the Food Worker Card Training Program. You actually have to make sure that your staff are trained by your managers inside your facilities. Each employee must be informed that they are required to report specific personal health conditions that can be spread through food to the person in charge. This is going to include the date of symptoms, so when they got sick, if they had a medical diagnosis, or if potentially they were exposed to a foodborne illness. All of these should be reported to the person in charge because knowing this information will help to make sure you're not spreading this throughout your food establishment as well. We have two levels of action that are needed for ill food workers. The first is called restriction. This is where workers are kept away from clean equipment, clean utensils, and they may not handle unpackaged food, but they can still do other tasks in the food establishment, such as sweeping, cleaning the dining area. Food workers that have symptoms like coughing, sneezing, sore throat, or an inflamed cut that can't be covered can be restricted as long as they stay away from the clean equipment and utensils, and as long as they don't handle unpackaged food. The most serious level is going to be exclusion. Some food workers need to be excluded from the food establishment if they have specific symptoms or a diagnosed illness. This is really important that everyone is aware of these. We have three symptoms that are going to potentially cause somebody to be excluded from a food establishment. So the three symptoms are diarrhea, vomit, and jaundice. Jaundice is when you potentially start to turn yellow. That might indicate that you have a problem with the liver that can spread through food. So again, if you have active diarrhea, vomit, or um, jaundice, you need to report to the person in charge. You need to make sure that that worker is then excluded away from the food establishment. They cannot work when they have those symptoms. We also have five diagnosed illnesses. You go to the doctor and the doctor um, indicates you have one of these five illnesses, you are excluded from the food establishment. All workers need to know this. Okay, it's Shigella, E. coli, hepatitis A, salmonella, and norovirus. Each of those, if you are diagnosed, you need to be excluded from the food establishment. On top of that, so these need to be reported to the person in charge. Some of them, the person in charge has to report to the health department as well. So each of those diagnosed illnesses, Shigella, E. coli, hepatitis A, salmonella, norovirus, and then also the symptom of jaundice, those need to be reported to the local health department because again, that could cause something that can make a lot of people sick. So again, really make sure that your workers are aware of which symptoms that they have to report to the person in charge and that your person in charge knows what they have to do. But we did have a few modifications to food worker hygiene that we'd like to highlight for you. First one is um, we did incorporate the FDA food code language to not allow medical information jewelry on the arms or hands. You're probably familiar that we don't allow rings or we don't allow bracelets or watches and that's so that you can make it sure it's easy to wash your hands, also so nothing will break into the food potentially and put a physical hazard into the food. But now we're gonna be really specific as well and say that includes medical information jewelry. So maybe a, a medical alert bracelet on the wrist. That would mean it have to be carried somewhere else on the body. So it could be on the um, neck or it could also be in the pocket or somewhere else. We also are requiring a single use glove to cover a bandage on the wrist, hand or finger. So if you have an injury and that you need a bandage on the, the lower part of the arm that can be covered up with a glove, you need to make sure staff are using a glove for that. And then we also added in some additional exceptions. So you might have front of house staff that can keep their hair restrained. Um, they don't necessarily need to wear a hairnet or, or other kind of uh, constraint on their hair out front. 
So this wraps up our quick discussion on the changes to employee health and hygiene. Please be sure to retrain all workers on the key symptoms and illnesses to report and encourage good personal hygiene at all times, even if your workers still feel healthy. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for all the latest news and updates impacting the hospitality industry.